Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here, and today we're talking about a brand new collection that just dropped from ColourPop yesterday. This is the 1111 collection. It's currently available. You can find it on the ColourPop site, and according to the information that they sent along in this PR package, this collection will also be available at Ulta. I do not have any of the Lux lipsticks. There are four Lux lipsticks in this collection. They weren't in my box. I don't know if it was just a mistake, oversight, whatever, but I can't show you any of the lipsticks. So I'm going to show you some screen recordings and imaging from the website. That way you can at least see everything all in one place. Apologies. I probably would have loved them. I love the Lux lipsticks. I think I'm just going to go ahead and go buy them for myself because that would probably be my favorite part of this collection. But if you decide to pick anything up, you can use my affiliate code. It's just my first name, Amanda, and that will save you 10% on pretty much everything on the site. There are some collections that are excluded and the code also won't work on any value sets, bundles, and volts. So just keep that in mind. Keep an eye on your cart totals. Make sure you're getting the best possible deal. And a huge thank you to everybody who does choose to support the channel by using my code. I really appreciate it. It makes a big difference. So thank you so much for just helping out the channel in that way. I truly appreciate you and I'm going to do my best to show you as much information as I possibly can. The first thing I want to show you is that there is a limited time deal. If you purchase the 1111 palette, you can get an eye brush set for $15. I love ColourPop brushes. I think they are really underrated. So if you haven't tried them, this might be a good way to test the waters if you're interested in this palette. I'm also going to click through here and show you the lipsticks since I don't have them. Like I said, there are four shades. These are all different depths of these beautiful neutral brown shades. This is really in my wheelhouse. This is really my style of lip color. So I'm going to go ahead and order these for myself since they were missing from my PR package. I just want to show you a little close up here of each one of the shades. All these colors look so lovely. Looks like a decent shade range as well. I'll have to wait to see them in person because sometimes they can look quite different in the photographs, especially on the website. I do find that the colors can be a little bit off from my in-person experience. So I'll keep you posted on these. Keep an eye out either here or over on the Makeup Just For Fun Instagram page. And I'll show some swatches once my order rolls in. Now let's move on to the pressed powder blushes. There are three different shades. These are retail priced at 12 US dollars a piece. I do wish there was a fourth shade just to coordinate with the lipsticks, but I am a blush fiend, so I'm kind of always hoping for more blushes. These have a cute little angel wings packaging, has the clear plastic cover, which means there's no mirror inside these compacts. And then when you look at the back, there is a shade name sticker for each one of these. My experience with the blush formula is that these are a satiny matte finish. There's no sparkles in here, but they don't feel like a completely chalk dry type of matte either. There is a silkiness to these that I absolutely love. I can see this type of in-between, not quite satin, not quite matte finish would work really well for a lot of different skin types. It's not going to be too dry and dusty on dry skin. I personally have drier, more mature skin, and these work nicely for me, but they're not shimmery. They're not glowy. So my friends with combo and oily skin will be able to use and benefit from this finish as well. I do wish there was one deeper shade. I feel like these blush shades are more geared towards light and medium skin tones. So I think in the context of this collection, one more deeper, maybe more brown, bronzy type of blush would have worked really well. Now we're moving on to some eye products. We have three shadow sticks in this collection. These are priced at $8 a piece. 
these have special packaging on the outer box and then when you look at the actual shadow sticks themselves we will see this little stars ethereal celestial type of theme on the caps as well there are two metallic finish shadow sticks and one matte finish these coordinate pretty well with the palette, but I do think it would have been cool to see a very cool toned matte shade, like a grayish taupey type of shadow sticks here. That way we could have four lips, four blushes, because I want one darker blush, and then four shadow sticks. Especially with an 1111 collection, it makes sense to have all of the numbers aligned but I don't know maybe I'm thinking too far deeply into this I did want to give you just a couple of comparisons for the shadow sticks I don't tend to do them as much for blushes I think my eyeballs just start to see all the blushes blending together and looking similar anyway but I do have some decent comparisons here for the shadow sticks I don't think any of these are exact dupes, but I was able to find some pretty similar shades. Hopefully this comparison is helpful to you, whether you have these other shades or not, to give you an idea of what these new colors look like. Now we're going to talk about the 1111 palette. This is priced at 18 US dollars. The palette itself and the outer packaging, the carton that it comes in, have the exact same artwork on the front. It's the back where they differ. The back of the outer carton has the ingredients list, and then the back of the palette does not have that information. So if you are somebody who has sensitivities or is otherwise interested in knowing the ingredients and having access to that list, they usually post it on their website, but I would recommend hanging on to that outer carton as well, just to be safe. There's no mirror inside this palette. It just has a similar image to what's on the front of the palette, but instead of 1111, it says ColourPop. And you can see there are some special imprinted pans here. We have some little star sparkles and the wings on that bottom row. As far as the shadow finishes go, we have six true mattes, one matte with shimmer, that very last deepest shade. Then there is one of their pearlescent glitter shades, so that's the really fine pressed glitter, that shade called Reflect, and then the remaining four shades are just straight up shimmery metallic shades. Color story wise, obviously she is very neutral. We have a mix of warmer and cooler tone neutrals in here. While it's not necessarily the most exciting, exhilarating, unique color story to look at, especially if you look at a lot of palettes like I do, I do definitely understand how this will be an incredibly useful palette for a lot of people. I do see how this is gonna be the go-to favorite for a lot of people. Just wanted to point out that this 1111 palette has the larger size pans, the 27 millimeter pans. I know people are always asking about that. Sometimes I forget to point that out. So I just wanted to show you here in comparison, the large pans versus the standard size pans that all of their palettes used to have. Now I wanna show you some swatches. I will show you both finger and brush swatches of the palette first before we get to the comparisons. All of these swatches are done just on the bare skin of my arm, no primer, nothing like that. And all of the brush swatches are done with a dry brush. I don't dampen my brush for my brush swatches. Performance wise, this palette feels quite nice. I have had some hit or miss palettes throughout the year this year. So I will say texture wise, these feel very consistent. You can see from the finger and brush swatches that the shadows are performing really nicely and almost identically with both finger and brush application, which really does tend to translate into performance on the eye quality in my experience this is an excellent sign. I think these shadows feel soft, pigmented, but not so soft and pigmented that they're crumbly or hard to work with. The only shadow that I really don't like is that pearlescent glitter shade, but that's just a personal preference thing for me. 
Now let's get into some comparisons. First, I combined That's Taupe and Going Coconuts. This is pretty much a dead on match. The only difference is some of the golden shades. So the second shadow and then the pearlescent glitter shade are a little bit more neutral toned in my comparison swatches. But overall, mattes are very, very similar and you're gonna get a lot of similar eye looks from these palettes. So if you have these two, you don't need 1111 and if you've been wanting them, you could get 1111 instead. Now let's move on to the Roaring Hearts comparison. Roaring Hearts only has 10 shades and I do find it to be quite a bit warmer in comparison to the 1111 palette. This one was requested quite a few times though over on my Instagram post about this collection. So I wanted to make sure that I included this one even though I don't think it's the best comparison we're going to see today. Another one that was highly requested is the Off Melrose palette. This is a very beloved eyeshadow palette from my ColourPop collection and you can see here it's definitely a similar vibe but it's not a lot of one-to-one -one matches. Off Melrose has a lot more variety in shade, but I think that these two could work really beautifully together. Or if 1111 is just a little bit too bland for you, you want that idea, but with just a little teeny tiny bit more spice, then Off Melrose might be the palette for you. Now we're gonna look at a comparison with the Fairy Well palette. I was not a fan of the performance of the Fairy Well palette, so I think that this 1111 could be a great alternative. I felt that Fairy Well was just a little bit lacking for me, and 1111 performance wise is quite a bit better. And based on these comparison swatches, I think that 1111 has a little bit more depth to offer. Not a lot more, but I do think there's more mid and deep tones to be had in 1111. Next, let's look at the Not A Box Of Chocolates palettes, another one that I really enjoy. Not A Box Of Chocolates is a lot more straight up warm. And overall, I find that 1111 is a bit lighter in comparison. There is a decent amount of shade to shade overlap here, but not a box of chocolates just doesn't really have the lighter and cooler tones to be considered a dupe in my opinion. However, you know that the mega palettes are always the heroes of my comparisons. Stone Cold Fox, pretty darn close here. It's really just missing those more golden tones. Probably just the second and third shades and then the pearlescent glitter are more warm, golden, have a little bit more of that orangey brown type of base to the shadows that Stone Cold Fox just can't really recreate. However, we can move over to the sister mega palette, Bare Necessities, one of my most used in life and in comparisons. And as you can see here, Bare Necessities has almost exact dupes, not every shade, not exact, exact, but when it comes to the eye looks, the shades are going to really start to look the same on the eye. I think you could do plenty of dupable eye looks using one or the other and nobody would be any the wiser. Personally, I would tend to recommend going for the mega palettes over this smaller version to get the most value to get the most shades, but not everybody wants a mega palette. Not everybody wants to store it and travel with it or have to figure out which shades they want to use for that day. I understand mega palettes are not for everybody. Personally, I prefer them to this one, but I see where this palette has a place in the world. A lot of people were asking for a comparison to the new Natasha Denona. I think it's called I Need a Nude. I don't have that one. I personally don't tend to buy a lot of Natasha Denona palettes or Patrick Tarr or Makeup by Mario. 
all those very high end and certainly very nice. I'm sure that these palettes are incredible quality. I just don't really necessarily like to drop that much cash, especially on a straight up neutral palette when, as you can see from the comparisons alone, I have plenty of neutral palettes already in my collection to love. So unfortunately, sorry, I can't include those comparisons because I don't have them. But I do think that you'd be right in assuming that they're probably pretty similar. I really wish that I had the Lux lipsticks in hand because I do think that would be my favorite part of this collection. I do think that would be my top pick from this collection. However, given everything that I do have in hand, I think I probably will use the blushes the most, but I think the palette's beautiful. I understand the market for it. I think a lot of people are going to love it. I think it's going to be an instant favorite for a lot of people. So I personally don't necessarily need it, love it, die for it, but I'm sure that there are a lot of people who this will be their absolute favorite, their go-to, their ride or die, the palette that they use and use until they've panned every shade. So I don't hate it. I just don't really live and die for it. And the shadow sticks personally are just not the type of product I like to use a lot. But again, I think they're pretty. I think they go well with the palette. So not a hate, just not a need for me. Anyway, I would love to hear what you think about this collection. Which pieces are your favorites? I always love to hear what you think about things too. So make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. And I love your face so much. Okay, bye.